us. Okay, folks, we are back again, <laughs> and today we are on right. now round five of the SRL that. season at Azerbaijan, and was unable to get qu uh, qualifying into the clip of the recording, but it was a pretty uneventful qualifying in all honesty. So going into this race, I was working really hard on the setup, and I actually had really good pace here. My uh, time trial rankings were better here than anywhere else that we had raced at so far this season, so that was promising going in in terms of my one lap pace. And I was able to find some massive improvements on my race pace, um, as the car had basically no grip or like a one lap setup in the race and I made a lot of changes to the setup for this race so I did suffer some in qualifying but uh, I also didn't put in a good lap either so that it's on me too it's like I definitely wasn't going to be on pole I think it was half a tenth I mean half a second off of pole position which is bad usually it's like a tenth or two or maybe three right but a full half a Everyone second on a lap on a track that going into this I felt well, I just was performing better at than any other tracks have been at so far. And I knew that was a combination of both, like I said, not nailing my qualifying laps like I should have, okay. just small mistakes in them. But with long straights, you know, make a small mistake on a corner cost you all the way down the long straight. That and knowing going in, you know, I had sacrificed my kind of one lap pace to have a solid race set up, which I think is really important on this track. And yeah, as you can see here, we are going to be starting on the hard tire. Sandro is actually starting ahead of us in P2. He had a, probably his best qualifying result he's had in years, so congrats to him. And Jensen, of course, on pole position. But we will see what happens come the race. Yeah, starting on hards and going to the mediums in today. This race is the plan. Well. Tire dig on this track is very high, but you know, I always kind of prepared knowing twice. how far I'm willing to go on each tire, which may come in play today. And as we fast forward to the start of the race, the lights are coming on. We'll see if we get a good grid start. Sandra is on the medium tires ahead, so it's going to be difficult to beat him off the line, but it looks like we have a great reaction time. Great oh, traction, great right throttle all allocation, and we were able to just hold it there on the outside. It's a little hot, but with those grippy, grippier tires, he's able to hold it on the inside. We're going to go in deep, really carry more speed, rounding out the outside of the corner, and we are able to get up into P2 early on, which was a massive overtake to happen for me to make happen early in this race. Because I knew in the long run I was going to be able to get Sandro, but being able to do so quickly so then Jensen doesn't pull away is vital for my race. Nope. Kinda. I mean, it I would be if it would go green smoke. the whole time, but I let's be real. See. It's Azerbaijan yeah. and it's SRL. Oh. You know, I, I trust breast milk from Bruce Jenner more than I trust this race going green the whole time. Ah. But regardless, the important oh thing God, is we are keeping smoke. up with him, at least in these early stages. So break. when the DRS is activated, we are I'm within that one I'm second really mark. Oh, and oh, speaking oh, of, oh, if the DRS is activated, it's not going to be activated anytime soon, as we have had an early safety car on this one. Way too early to pit. It's not worth giving up all the track position to do mediums to mediums all the way to the end. So we are going to stay out on these it. hard tires. And yet, mission. this is still beneficial for me because I'm not gonna lie, I, was I believe Jensen pin. started on the medium <laughs> tires as well. If I remember correctly, I could be wrong, he's on the hards. But nonetheless, this brings the field together, doesn't let him pull away. And because I had to pass Sandro and then catch back up to Jensen, I'm sure I had to use more ERS in that first lap that Jensen did. So this helps neutralize that ERS situation, which may help me in the long run. And again, I know these videos are probably shorter now. I think I brought it up in the last one, but just to make sure, uh, I'm kind of just cutting out the heavy talking in the middle parts of where nothing happens because one, there isn't really much to report on in terms of things changing for me in terms of what leagues I'm racing in and such. And also, it would just be me just reiterating the same shit you hear all the time. Strategy is important. Why I start on the harder of the two tires I run on in a race first. This is the importance of staying in DRS or breaking DRS, importance of meter management, you know, it's the same shit that you guys have been hearing me talk about for, for two years now, so I don't want to keep reiterating the same thing, so if anything, just get to the meat of these videos so people can see a good recap of what happens of just my POV in the race, and yeah, like I said, cut out all the bullshit that you guys know 
by now. He went for the suicide like I said, it's mission, mostly the same stuff the every week, but if there is something new to talk about, there's an interesting to situation to raise, I'll go into more detail on that, and also keeping these videos a little bit shorter will help me reel them out and get um, us no, I, I caught you do back that, up to where we currently are in this season. Ugh, so crack my neck a little bit, ring out my spine. And we get back underway. We don't have the best of launches. Jensen is uh, going to get a good start on us here. But we are still well within striking distance. He's a little bit of the ERS. Make sure we keep up with him. But more importantly, we're going to make sure that no one gets a run on us behind. We go too deep into the corner and lock up. So this is going to allow Sandro to get by us. A mistake there in the braking zone on these hard tires. It's so easy to snatch a tire braking on this track. And yeah, that was a mistake by me, but hopefully we are able to make the make take back on Sandro sooner rather than later and get back with the DRS of And speaking of the sooner rather than later, coming onto this straight, you will see that we just have a massive straight line speed advantage over Sandro. Sandro was running a higher wing setup than we were. And I was worried that I was going to be running more wing than most people because I added wing to the setup going from, you know, a qualifying setup to the race. But it turns out Sandro added a lot of wing, which is really going to help him in terms of his consistency and being able to break away from people in the middle part of the race. The middle part of the track, I'm sorry. Middle part of the lap. But in the long straights like that, he will be susceptible. But... I don't think he wanted to fight me too hard. Uh, he knows my race pace is good here, and he just wants to solidify his fantastic qualifying for some good points for himself. You know, he didn't have the season he wanted to last year. And qualifying on the front row of a grid in the next season, and early on in the season, too, is like a really promising thing. You definitely want to capitalize on those points when you when they're on the table for you, especially on a track like this where it's so easy to just throw it away. Like I did, all I did was simply snatch a break a little bit going into turn one, and I lost basically a whole lap of trying to hunt down Jensen, and I lost a position on track as well. Fast forward yeah, now to this, uh, the end of lap new, six. We use a decent new. amount of ERS to make sure we get back within the DRS and stay within the DRS of Jensen. But with the DRS here, it looks like we're going to be able to make the overtake happen. We have a fantastic run coming before the rear wing flap even opens up. So yeah, very long DRS straight. Very, very easy to make overtakes happen there, to say the very least. And now the question is, will we be able to hold him off going into this DRS straight at the beginning of the lap? We get a solid exit. And we use a little bit How of the ERS cool meter to points. solidify the position. Yeah, Jensen not the better exit there. And we are able to hold on to the position for now. Midway through the lap, we would get a virtual safety car. And I was starting to have an internal dialogue mentally of, am I going to pit? Am I not? If this is still virtual, when we get around to the pits, would it be worth it? But no time to think about that. The safety car ends in a little bit of an awkward spot for me. Jensen gets a great yeah, run on it, and this is going to be really unfortunate for us because now DRS is activated on this lap as well. And yeah, that kind of sucks. You know, we pulled not really a, a, a big gap on him, but definitely, you know, about half a second after we made the overtake and he didn't have the great exit out of turn two. Just for all that to be not even neutralized, but him to make up time on us from the VSC, and now I'm just a sitting duck on this DRS straight. It's just one of those things you can't really control. There is never going to be a perfect world when it comes to how to do yellows and VSCs, but yeah, it's still early in the race. No big deal, but it was a little bit frustrating in the heat of the moment that I'm like, you know, damn, I didn't even have a chance to create a little bit of gap or anything, and he just gets handed the position back, because that VSC timing kind of sucked, but it is what it is, and I'm happy at this point that me and Jensen are breaking away for the rest of the field, which puts us in a really good position, and it also shows that if there is any other safety cars later in the race that me and him have the pace to kind of pull away from the rest of the field, it's a lot easier to avoid bullshit in a race when you're only really battling with one person than when Thank you're battling God, with like a whole man. train of like five cars, like, for example. Yeah. And in I, lap nine, we are I going to have another full safety low. car as Luke has low. been either crashed out low. or taken out. I forget <laughs> which one happened. I'm sure you can because hear him talking about it in the party uh, chat. Yeah. And yeah, that's going to be another full safety Luke, car in this race. And on lap nine, you would imagine that 
pitting is something we should do. Nine lap old tires. And uh, if we pit, we're not going to lose much track out. position at all because me and Jensen were able to put a decent sized gap on the rest of the field. So yeah, you'll most likely see us pit here to a fresh set of medium, medium tires. And probably run like a, I don't, I'm actually not sure if mediums could go, I don't think mediums could go to the end from here, but nonetheless be able to do mediums to softs. So yeah, fast forwarding to the end of the safety car, we get a much better launch this time. Me and Jensen both go to a fresh set of medium tires, but my tires are a little bit cold, so I need to not make the same mistake that I made last safety car restart. We're going to break earlier, hold a much better line, not the best, but... You know, just doing what we need to do, get these tires at the temperature, and just get back to where where we were. I'm more focused on breaking away from the group behind right now than I am passing Jensen. If I get the opportunity to, of course I'm going to do it. But yeah, I really want to make this a two-car race because, I mean, you guys have seen the races. A lot more of these races come down to bullshit you can't control rather than the actual racing on track. So if I can eliminate amount, the amount of cars around me on track just by chilling for a little bit and just letting the pace of me and Jensen break us away you know I'm fine by that and then you know we'll worry about the race win later I've pulled a forward now to lap 14 you can see third place is keeping up with us but not right up on us if, I don't know how much ERS he's using I haven't used basically any because now we have DRS active I'm gonna use just a touch of the battery just to see what kind of run I get on Jensen coming out of this corner looks like we got some decent straight lines the slipstream obviously helping and yeah that's basically impossible to say. the slipstream and the DRS being as good as it is and just having it for that long of a time it just makes overtakes absolutely free on tracks like this that is something honestly I hope changes in future games that as annoying as dirty air can be on some tracks, it's realistic. You know, I'd rather a game be much harder to overtake but realistic than what it is. Because as it stands right now, if you just got two cars DRSing each other, they're just going to be able to overtake each other over and over. Because the slipstream in DRS is so much hey, stronger well, yeah. than the negative effect of dirty air. You know, the dirty air is very minimal. I mean, I even feel dirty air way more when I play games like Gran Turismo. And especially even the older F1 games, the dirty air was much worse. Now, given those cars were what a speck of a car that produced worse dirty air, but even then, if we're talking the last generation of cars, they literally could have doubled the effect of dirty oh, air man. in those games, and it mm. still wouldn't have done justice. Like, uh, There's a healthy balance to be there, but when we got strong DRS what are and slipstream, like but yet third ear is basically non-existent. It kind of creates these situations what are you see a the lot race? where, like you know, someone overtakes me and I'm like, who cares, I can just get them back later we're all just chilling in a line. Or vice versa, where maybe I overtake someone, but it's clearly like, yep, they're not really going nice. to fight it, like we're just going to chill behind them for now, you know. Yeah. By making overtaking a little bit harder with the dirty air i feel like it would not only make the game more realistic but it would make the battles that do happen more meaningful as well but so that's just my opinion i'm all for the immersion in these games so anything that's just more realistic i am all for 100 percent whether it's sound visuals but this is a whole rant that, you, that i probably shouldn't be getting into in, in this video we pull it forward to all the way to lap 18. We are able to keep Jensen behind, still with 60%. He's really close behind us there, but a safety car has come out. So now, clearly on some used tires, we don't want to sit out in front with used tires, especially with gap to cars behind us. Same thing as last time. We're not going to lose positions on track, so we might as well go to some fresh tires because... The fight is each other, basically. Even after the safety car restart happens, we're going to be able to pull away from the rest of the field again. So it comes down to just a battle bus. But in my testing, I do think that softs can go to the end. They will be very worn at the end, but I do think that softs might just be the better tire because I do think mediums will be better at the end, but I predict go at the time that softs would be better much longer 
then the mediums would be better, which I think would do two things. Like, if I can have the pace advantage while I have the track positioning as well, if I can break DRS, I pretty much figured that that's GG. Because if I break DRS, then I'm on a quicker tire, and he isn't benefiting from my slipstream, like, that'll be that'll be massive and i didn't want to be a sitting duck because if i would have made the passive play of going to mediums and he goes to soft then he would have been able to get the track positioning on me so track positioning in this instance is important and it's honestly just a judgment call i know that the softs can make it but the question is are they the better tire to go to you know there's only so much information you can have to go on unless if you've been in the exact same position before you know there's some there's some instances like this where it is better to go to the mediums when it's right on the cusp of it softs can make it but there's other times that the softs are better my gut told me that softs are the better that's the decision we go with and now we just focus on the driving all right, folks, safety car to come in at the end of lap 20, which means we are going to have six laps of green flag racing. We get it. Okay, launch. Jensen is close behind us. Not the best of launches. And he is actually going to go for the overtake here immediately on us, but he overtook us too soon. We did not lift or anything. And yes, he is going to have to allow us to retake that position as he yeah. passed us oh, he before the start finish side. line. That is the rules oh, of the I, league. I no best. overtaking before the start and finish no. straight. So yeah, he no, got a great no, run no. on us down the front stretch, but was just too so the eager uh, no, the with the changed. ERS so and pulled himself the ahead just a little yeah, bit too to soon we to and oh, no. him backing off a little bit <laughs> no, no, no. almost gives us a little bit of an opportunity to get better exit and pull ahead a little bit and we're on these soft tires so right now i'm just focusing oh on God, executing Max. what i practiced no, no, no. leading up to this race and i know that this is my moment now if i can break the drs i am looking really good to win this race these tires have only really got a last six laps but the tire wear is so terrible here that i know his mediums are going to be better right at the end but hopefully then i at least have enough of a gap and enough ers remaining in the battery to hold off this win in our first win of the season on round five as we pull it forward now end of lap 22 i believe i will look back here and see yes i have built a gap we are over a second to jensen behind which means he will not have drs on us which you know that's that's massive if he would have been able to stay in drs of us on a harder tire then you know that would have been ggs for us but the setup's good on race trim we're on the softer tire we just gotta hope that they last and they got the pace in them long enough for us to bring home the win still sitting pretty with the battery but i don't want to be too passive with it i'd rather spend more battery to keep him out of my drs because it's going to be almost impossible to defend if he is in drs of me on that main straight even if i got a, a slight advantage with the battery but just four laps to go including this one so three and a half laps to go oh we're looking God. good at the moment but still a lot can happen with the different don't tire strategies him, playing out at the end of this race no, Pull it forward again to the final breaking point, final actual corner that matters. On lap 24, using more of the battery, get as good of a run down this stretch as possible. We will look back here and see Jensen still about the same gap behind. So we're reaching that point where his mediums are becoming a little bit better. But critically enough, you'll hear the gap behind now. And critically enough, he does not have a penalty. I'm only on, I think, one warning, if any warning. So penalties are not an issue. It's just coming down to the driving and if these soft tires can make it. And this is why, you know, I say time and time again, you just got to know how long each tire can go. You know, if these tires hold off, then I basically have won the race just by going to the right tire. Which, you know, it's, it's great to win races like that. But I did feel like I had really good race pace anyhow Not i sacrificed idea. qualifying for the race and yeah the practice is paying off at the moment but we still got a lap and a half remaining in this one we still gotta hold them off because these tires are going to s start to really die i could already no. feel the grip going did, away which is not I a great feeling when you know uh, the guys then. behind just has fresh tires and your tires while yeah, they are quick tires fire. are you can feel the grip going away quickly and knowing his gaps coming down because if he's close enough, like even half a second behind coming to that final stretch, there's no way I'm going to be able to hold on for the end of this race. So we're going to be very aggressive with our ERS usage even before that final stretch of the final lap. 
because, like I said, that DRS is going to be too strong. So we just want to keep them out of DRS up until that point. You can see we have a bad corner there. The rear just wants to slip out, but there's nothing left in these tires, and I still got to make it around one more lap. So we're going to stay on board here for the entirety of this final lap. You can see he is almost just in the DRS range, but I just got to survive one more lap with a quarter of my battery left, and we will see if it is enough for us to claim our first win of the season solid enough through turn one it's going to be critical to get a decent exit here coming around turn two we even used a burst of battery coming out of turn one because we just want the gap between us to be as big as possible so he gets the least amount of slip streak. i feel like that was going to be really important he doesn't get a great exit out of turn two so we are looking good so far but now here's where the twisty bits are this is the part where i was faster throughout the entire race but now that i'm on tires that are just more dead this is going to be his opportunity to close the gap in to something manageable to go down the front stretch. You can see the tires are just absolutely done sliding around like crazy. There's nothing left. Even in third gear and half throttle, I was getting wheel spin. Just incredible the lack of grip I have. Maximizing my track width usage though. The driving has been great but by myself. I've only made that one minor mistake in the braking zone to turn one at the beginning. At the end, I guess it would be on the first safety car restart. My brain didn't think about how to describe that for a second. But now, Jensen's getting close. He's going to have a DRS, but is it going to be an enough? Only time could tell. I was really nervous at this point in the race. Still, the tires are spinning on the exit of every corner, and now we just hold the battery to the very end of the race. You don't see the proximity arrow, but he's closer than it seems. You can see he's going to be well within the DRS. He's out of battery. I'm out of battery, but he's got the DRS. Is he going to get oh, close enough to the line? No, he's not getting oh, enough shit. of a run of us to beat us to the line. We crossed the line in P1, our first win of the season. That was fucking nerve -wracking. And it just like felt that. really good to put together a good race and so in the end, not get screwed was, over in a race. So. <laughs> that was probably about the same. I mean, yeah, we have so many so frustrating yeah, races, so, uh, but, you know, it feels good that when we're not affected by some bullshit in a race that we do have what it takes to come out and win. Well we are very strong in this track, and unlike a race like <laughs> Qatar, where I just no, missed just something with the setup, yeah. I... The opposite happened here where I was the one that kind of found something oh, specifically with the race setup and that gave me just enough of an advantage uh, with the tires to like be able to make those soft tires work at the end of the race and claim our first win of the season. So yeah, that one felt good to get. Uh, Sandro did end up falling back to P6 after starting second, but still solid points for him. Our teammate finishes P10. There was only 16 cars in this race and... Pretty much guaranteed points just Great for finishing this one just shows how hectic it was and how many other people retired in the pits that you didn't see throughout the video. But yeah, hectic race, multiple safety cars. We're able to get our first win of the season. So uh, join us in the next one. We'll see if we can keep this momentum going.